So we've done the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. We've done the statement of changes in equity. All that's left now is the statement of financial position. Again, the heading as at 31st of March. This one, again, the format is pretty stock standard. Make sure that you can do this. It's all very well and good that I give you the format. But again, as I've said before, you're going to have to write this out in an exam. So you're going to want to make sure you get used to that. Another thing a lot of students battle with is just how much space do you leave if you are preparing these formats? How many lines do you leave? It's a matter of practice, finding out and identifying how many transactions there are, whether you leave four lines or five, but you want to get to a point where you can comfortably write this out and then fill it in, sort of plug it in as you go along. So you really want to make sure that you're comfortable with how, how to write these out. For the first one, I'm trying to show you how to pull things in from the trial balance. So I've given you the format, but make sure that you can do this yourself and you can write this out yourself. Your assets are going to be made up of your non-current and your current assets. So let's take our trial balance that we've got and figure out what's left to do. We've done the statement of changes in equity. So we've dealt with our capital and our drawings and we've dealt with all our income and expense items as well. So that just leaves us with the statement of financial position items that we have. And we've identified all the different assets by putting little A's next to them. So these are all of your assets. So how do we show these and what is it that we want to identify or break these down between for our users? Well, our statement of financial position says that we've got to break down current and non-current assets. So let's identify what those are. Our vehicles are non-current, our equipment non-current, computer equipment non-current and tools are non-current. And the reason for this, these all fall underneath your property, plant and equipment. All of these you expect to use in the future. You expect to realize them for a period and get a benefit from them for a period of longer than 12 months. So we know that an asset is about understanding that there are economic benefits that come to the company or to the entity as a result of these assets. And PPE, your non-current assets, are assets that we believe those economic benefits are going to continue coming for a period greater than a year. On the financial statements, we don't disclose all of these separately. So we don't put separate line items for vehicles, equipment, computer equipment, tools, etc. We put it all together and we call it your property, plant and equipment. So your proper disclosure. And again, if you go back right back to the beginning, you'll see where I spoke about property, plant and equipment. And I said that your plant is not the plant you have in your garden. It's your machinery and that that's required to run your business. So we have property, plants and equipment. The problem here is that you've got four items and four line items that belong in there. And we only have one line item in here. In an exam, it's very important that you let your examiner know that you understand where the figures come from. The examiner is not in your head and he doesn't understand and he doesn't know exactly how you got to that number. So anything that we're going to be doing, any calculation that you need to make, you need to show it out step by step so that they can see exactly what it was that you did. But on the face of the financials, we don't have space to do that. So we always leave a little reference and we go, here's a little working, number one, and we can put it in brackets. And our examiner knows that there's a little calculation that needs to go find. And right underneath, right underneath your, your statement, you leave a bit of space and you say working one. And you identify exactly what it is that you're going to be doing. This way you have space to put all your calculation, exactly what you're doing, and you only have to put the total in there. So our property, plant and equipment. So we say my property, plant and equipment. And this does take a bit of time. So practice is very important here. Property, plant and equipment. And what you want them to know is that it consists of and then list them out. What is it that we are dealing with? This also helps because as you can see, there are four items. If you add them all together, what if while you're busy doing your calculations in the general ledger or the trial balance, what if you got one of these numbers slightly wrong? If you just add it all together and put it straight into here, you'd see that your total would be wrong and the examiner would mark you wrong completely because he doesn't know where you got that number from. It just looks completely wrong. Whereas if we break it down and we say, okay, the number that I've used for vehicles is 95,000. So property, plant and equipment is made up of vehicles of 95,000. It's made up of equipment at 13,600. equipment at 13,600. 
we have computer equipment at 12,800. And we've got uh, tools at 6,000. And now we give a, a little total. What we're doing to the examiner, or what we're allowing them to do, is say if something here is incorrect, if one of these items are wrong, they can see where you got it from. So they, you would still get marks for the rest of the calculation. And this is what we call marking your error through. If you got a mistake, or if you made a mistake while you were doing the general ledger, you don't want to lose marks throughout the entire process. You just want to lose marks there where you made the error. If we can continually see what number we're using, we say, okay, you made a mistake, so your total is wrong. So you lost that mark. But when you use that total for the next item or to draw up your financial statements, you don't want to lose another mark as well. You've already lost one. So make sure that we can always tell exactly where you got your number from and we can always pull them across. That way we can mark your error through and you'll only lose the one mark. So it's absolutely imperative that you re reference your calculation. You've got to make sure that you do this little working. Don't just put a calculation down here without referencing it and do it as you go because these are how you earn marks. So our total property plant and equipment, our 95, 13, 6, 12, 8 and 6,000 gives me my 1, 2, 7, 400. So now I know my PPE is 1, 2, 7, 400. That's my total. So again, I know exactly what my non-current assets are. We've now dealt with our vehicles, our equipment, our computer equipment, and our tools. We have no other non-current assets, so we can move straight to our current assets. You've got a debtor of zero, and remember that's trade and other receivables, but since it is zero, we will not put it on the financial statement. And bank, we've got 79,904, so my bank account is sitting at 79,904. We always put little blocks around it so we can show that there's a total. Even though we've only got one amount in here, we always subtotal it and we always put it up. It's a form of habit as well. Make sure that you always do this. So you can see now I'm telling you my non-current assets are 127,400. My current assets are 79,904. So my total assets are made up of the 127,400 plus the 79,904. And that's going to give me 207. Three, zero, four. So those are my total assets. Again, keep going back to the trial balance and take a look at what we're doing. There's no way we would have picked that information up from the trial balance that we're looking at. So what we've done is we've given an indication of exactly the asset value. On top of that, if I was an investor, if I'm using your financial statements, by separating your current and your non-current assets, I can see exactly what value you have on hand at the moment that you can get your hands on. If you say to me you've got 207,000 rands worth of assets, that's fantastic. The question is how long do you expect or how long is it going to take you to get the value of those assets? Your current asset is instant. I can see that your bank account, it's instant. You have 79,000 Rand on hand immediately, the rest of it is going to realize over a period longer than a year. So it shows me how long it's going to take for those benefits to come towards you. So that's the asset side of our, sorry, that's the asset side of our statement of financial position. Let's go and do the equity and liabilities. We have total equity and total liabilities. The total equity we calculated on our statement of financial position. So our equity, we calculated that the total capital, and if you go and take a look at that, you'll see the capital work out to 83,904. And that we pull off of the final balance on our statement of changes in equity. So that means my total equity for the month, 83,904. Four. My liabilities, again we split between non-current and current liabilities, and those are the only items we have left. Finance, loan and your creditor. Your finance and your loan from the bank would be your long-term loan, so we can put those in. My non-current liabilities, I have finance from Payless Fleet. And the value on that, the amount that I owe at the end there, was 90,000. 
and I also have a bank loan and that's sitting at 30,000. So my non-current liabilities at this point, the liabilities that I can settle in a period greater than a year is 120,000. And at the moment, my creditors, my short-term liabilities are 3,400. So my current liabilities, 3,400. And those, remember, we call that our trade and other payables. Remember, for the format of the financial statement, those are my trade and other payables, and I give that a total as well, 3,400. My total liabilities, therefore, 1, 2, 3, 4, 100. So when I take a look at this, I can now tell that my total assets, 207,000, 304, my equity 83904, and my liabilities 123400. Remember my basic accounting equation? What did my basic accounting equation say? It said that my assets must be equal to my equity plus my liabilities. So my asset is equal to 207304, my equity is 83904, and my liabilities are 123. 400. So let's see if our equity and our liability does actually equal my assets. And this in your exams is your moment of truth. When you're drawing these up in the exams, this is where you hold your breath and you hold your thumbs that you've done everything correctly. So 83904 plus 123400 is going to give us 207304. And hey presto, we are in balance. So our assets, 207304, is equal to my equity plus my liabilities, which means my balance sheet or my statement of financial position, sorry, is in balance. It's nice and neat. It's all together. You can see the totals. You can see exactly where each of these elements are. You can see exactly how they're pulled through. And you can also see why it's important to do your statement of profit and loss first, so we can calculate the profit. The statement of changes in equity, so we can calculate the total capital amount, and then we can plug all of them in here. And now when you take a look at your trial balance, we have posted, we've taken everything from the trial balance to the statement of financial position. And you can see that we've dealt with everything. It's nice and neat when we have everything in order over here. Your job is to make sure that you get very comfortable taking items off of the trial balance and putting them in statement of financial position. Keep in mind, in an exam, you're not always going to get trial balances that are in perfect order. In a lot of cases in trial balances, if they ask you to, to compile a financial statement, they may put all of these in a very different order because they want to see if you know what to do with them. Again, my hint to you is to create these next to them, is to put all your elements next to them so that you can see exactly what you are dealing with. That is going to take some work, and I suggest you make sure you do questions on that because it's going to take a little bit of practice.